largest travel retailers. Uh, their India presence comprises of market leading FCM and corporate travel brands, the fast moving travel tours retail network and the travel money India currency business, corporate mice and FCM incoming South Asia. Uh, prior to um, FCTG, uh, Rakshit spent a number of years turning around and scaling up businesses for the Thomas Cook Group in Canada, UK and in India. He's also our chairman of Fiki Corporate and Mice Committee. Thank you so much, Rakshit. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, See, and last but not the least, uh, Kamal Hingorani currently serves as Chief Customer Officer at Spice uh, Jet, looking at in-flight services, customer experience, and corporate affairs. He additionally takes care of sustainability for the organization, and I know how passionate he is about it. He's a, a transformational specialist with 14 years at Spice Jet in leadership roles. He's a yoga enthusiast and a trainer, if you all did not know. So the next time you're on a spice jet flight and see someone doing yoga in the aisle, you know who it is. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Kamal. Okay, now let's get the show on the road. So this is how we're going to do spend the next hour. I'm going to uh, kick it off with Rupinder Barar, our ADG. We'll start the proceedings with her opening remarks. I would then request her to come back at the end of the session and comment on what she has heard from us. I will ask each of us to make some remarks for about five minutes, and then we can obviously take on more questions. Uh, welcome, uh, Rupinder. Thanks, Deepak, and thanks for also assuring me that uh, it's the lady who has the last word. So, <laughs> next, um, always, to... always. <laughs> thanks for that, and thanks for a very um, you know lavish, I would say, introduction. And um, it always feels good to be with everyone. And uh, Josaji, it's always a pleasure to be on panel with Fiki. We've learned a lot as we've uh, moved last year. And I would say, in a sense, uh, I was trying to look at some quotes and said, great things never come from comfort zone. And how much have we been thrown out of comfort zone since last year is so evident. And in that sense, uh, while it has thrown a lot of challenge for the industry and Really, not and for friends, particularly the ones who depend entirely on inbound tourists, the distress and stress continue and more organized business kind of sort of not behind us. So, they are, they are tough times, and in a sense, I would say to see that everyone has after the initial shock moved into a space that yes we are confronted with an unprecedented challenge but what do we really now do and do we recalibrate do we reboot ourselves and think through while trying to find some temporary solutions for sustaining ourselves uh, in the current pandemic and uh, so it's been a it's been a tough journey but i would say it's also been an interesting journey where all of us have needed to introspect a lot and see what is it that we need to do as government? What is it that we need to do as stakeholders? And not only as a response to COVID, but actually taking the learnings from COVID and seeing how incredible India is going to be positioning itself for a decade to come or, or longer. And I think that's where uh, the interesting part of the journey as far as COVID goes. And I would look at it in the sense that if we divide our sector into three clear segments of the uh, product, process, and promotion. And if we see the three P's of tourism uh, in how do they really take it forward, I think the product pass is where the role of technology is, is something that we all have already started looking at very, very keenly. And uh, if we see where are we and where we need to go, I think those are the lessons, lessons coming from airlines like Qatar that adopted the Honeywell's Ultra Voyager. Uh, you know, very, very advanced technology, because that's where we are talking of confidence. And since our session today is largely about instilling confidence to travel, I think measures like these are extremely important on how the industry and the governments around the world respond. How to make sure that in terms of the processes, whether at the airports, whether at the hotels, hospitality units, again, how do we integrate technology to create uh, a virtual customer service to create uh, some kind of information interfaces and how to therefore become a country that and we're talking of india at 75 this year 
And therefore, yes, a heritage which is old, but then a country that's driven by a lot of modern technology, I think that is something that has come to stay as part of a response to how do we take India forward post COVID? And uh, I think that is something that we are already working on, on building how technology should penetrate our working processes more, but more needs to be done. And in terms of promotions and in terms of looking at where the world is, uh, with some of few of my conversations are more frequent. Uh, to share with all of you that we are uh, practically studying the situation every single day. And therefore, when uh, Deepak, I and some of us were talking about what is it that the government should be doing in terms of creating demand as and when uh, the tourist visa is actually open, which of course was also related to the first question, when do we actually open the tourist visas? And that is still work in progress because the inputs required from, in this case, the domain ministry being the health, because they are the ones who first need to say, yes, okay, this is a green signal, let's go and move. But then we said, Let, can we be in preparedness? Let's look at visas, a sort of a freebie. It may not be a huge cost to the visa, but it's a feel-good factor. It's a signaling device for everyone that, okay, India is truly looking at welcoming people, and that's how that came about. SCIS, yes, that came about also because that's something that was pending actually. I, I don't think that was uh, anything new. That was an existing uh, scheme. We just worked together to make sure that it actually, hopefully in the next few weeks, starts coming back to our uh, beleaguered sector. But in terms of confidence to travel, I think, and I've been trying to have a lot of meetings uh, and more than meetings, I, I am calling them my listening sessions because we need to talk to people around the world. And so I've been trying to speak to uh, the media that we normally partner with and also some media that we don't partner with to try and understand what is the world thinking about travel per se and what is the world thinking about traveling to India and when are they really thinking that they're going to feel good about traveling and what is it that will really compel them and say, yes, let India be my choice uh, country for traveling to. So some of the interesting things that are coming out is that, yes, as intuitively we can all understand, vaccination is going to be a huge factor in confidence building. But what is also interesting, and that is a feedback I got uh, last night from the time guys, is that, you know what, uh, some of us so love India that even if you're not vaccinated, but we are vaccinated, so we are ready to come. So, you know, why, why wouldn't you open sooner than later? So that was actually a very encouraging comment. But having said that, Majority, yes, looking for vaccination to pace up in India and also looking at more subtle messaging. That's another uh, very, very, I would say, important learning that I got uh, from everyone that I spoke to. They said, you know what, we don't need this messaging sort of in the face, which says we are safe, because in a sense, it's a reminder that things were not safe. So you've got to do it, but you've got to do it in a far more nuanced and subtle manner. So that's something mm -hmm. we are incorporating. We are making a lot of content, which is going to sit in our uh, closet, so to say. And the moment the visa is, uh, is told to us by the health that, yes, let's go ahead and let's start getting people into India now. So we're going to roll out a lot of content, which is focusing on safety, but in a far more subtle manner. And it's also focusing a lot on outdoors, open areas, the national parks, the sanctuaries, and traveling to the hither to lesser known uh, places of India. Those are the things that are of great interest that we are picking up from the, from the market, from the industry across the world. Long haul flights, US, people are a little tentative. Europe looking really very, very responsive, and Japan also looking reasonably responsive, because in their own country also, they don't have a very high rate of vaccination. So they're not really asking for us also for a lot of vaccination. They are saying, let us come in with RT-PCR, but yes, for now we are not talk about in India yet, but yes, Lambda is round the corner. And India is also looking at the numbers uh, going down. We are able to deal with that. And we are opening. And that's uh, somewhere where our campaign is on, but we need people that if we could not 
not decent even in our domestic trips because if we do not manage the domestic traffic well in the weeks to come, then the kind of messaging is available to anyone and everyone are probably getting the inbound tourist either. So these responsibility campaigns need to be social distancing, which is what is they called Ajay Singh, who's always maintain never waste a crisis and never a crisis of this magnitude. So like he walks the talk, we like to walk in those footsteps. So what we did uh, during the COVID early stages was work very closely with the Ministry of Civil Aviation in developing all the protocols that you currently see adopted by all the domestic airlines in India, right from the PPE kits, et cetera. And we are happy that we've taken the lead and Ministry of uh, Civil Aviation, you know, uh, actually uh, uh, enable them and mandated them for all the airlines. Uh, so what, what we also did was that simultaneously we put a lot of emphasis on technology and digitization. So what everybody wanted at that time was whenever we resume, uh, you know, it must be as contactless as possible. So we enabled an end-to-end -end contactless customer journey, uh, which then meant that people should not, uh, you know, have to go to check-in counters. People should not interact with not other human beings as far as possible. So we did e-web check-in, we did e-boarding passes, we did e-baggage tags, and everything was e. And that, uh, you know, those few months when the flights were down, two months and five days. I think we we worked almost eight hours a day virtually with the IT teams and all, and enabled something which was you know something uh, which wouldn't have happened otherwise. Believe you me, I'll give you a small anecdotal thing. Uh, you know, you all have been traveling through domestic and international airports in India, and you all know that our security guys always like to stamp the boarding passes. We are the only country on the planet that gets a stamp on the boarding card once you've cleared security. I have personally tried to work on this with BCAS, with MOCA, with everybody over the last 15 years. Why do we need it? And every time it was no, 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 for security reasons. Thanks to COVID, it's gone for once. And we are now along with 200 countries of the world that you know follow the same protocol. So we, we, we achieved, I think, quite a lot and we really didn't want it to go waste. It didn't stop just at the airport experience. Uh, in flight, uh, uh, we ensure that uh, we have uh, 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 what we call in-flight entertainment system is something we redesigned uh, at a uh, redesigned internally to make sure you bring your own device and there's a lot of content, which also has a menu, et cetera. So you don't have to touch a physical menu card. We stopped accepting cash for uh, food and beverage on board. It was only debit or credit cards uh, and things like that. So automation not only helped us in, you know, uh, making sure that it was contactless from a COVID perspective, it also supported our cause of sustainability. Everything became paperless today. I can proudly say that 70% of SpiceJet offices are paperless, uh, which is which which probably is the best in the given times in India at this time. Uh, Deepak asked me about, um, you know, other efforts that we've done on sustainability. So I think the biggest thing we used COVID was that uh, we, uh, you know, developed what we call a blueprint uh, of deploying sustainable aviation fuel in India, which probably couldn't have happened in normal times. And we engaged with World Economic Forum over the last one year. I personally spent an hour every week virtually with McKinsey and World Economic Forum and another 15 stakeholders to develop what is a 70 page document, which was formally released by the Minister of Petroleum and Natural Gas in April. And fortunately, there's a task force uh, comprising private and public uh, stakeholders. And what this blueprint talks about is, uh, you know, the feedstock availability in India. Uh, this is for sustainable aviation fuel because ultimately the biggest change that aviation needs to bring about to reduce carbon emissions is sustainable aviation fuel. Even though India contributes less than 1% to the carbon emissions, but because optics of aviation is so strong that we found that if we 
um, lead it from the front. It has a geometric impact on a lot of other industries. And, and there was this case study that was done on India where they talked of technological pathways and policy recommendations for the regulatory bodies. And we're very happy that both Ministry of Civil Aviation and Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas have accepted it well. And, and we are well on our way now on a monthly task force. So this is something which you know may bear fruit uh, maybe five to 10 years, actually five years from now when we see more SAF being produced in India for all airlines. Uh, and this came from, you know, at the, at the uh, uh, SDG Climate Summit of September 2019 on the sidelines of UNGA where, you know, Ajay Singh was invited to speak and, and that's because we had done the first uh, biojet fuel demo flight. We're the first airline in South Asia to have done that in August 18 where you know he announced that we must have a target so let's target 100 million passengers in 2030 domestic passengers who will fly on saf uh, supported aircraft and that was a target that was subsequently accepted by world economic forum and that's what we are now working towards and we are very happy that you know various ministries in the government of india have also graciously accepted that target and said we'll uh, completely support you deepak you asked me on load factors and all um, we had touched 60% uh, traffic. I'm talking of only domestic uh, way back in February when the first wave had uh, subsided and we thought COVID was behind us. Um, unfortunately, what we saw in May was a disastrous situation where we only had 10%. We used to have 4.4 lakh passengers daily pre pandemic and we came down to 40,000 passengers in certain days of May, as we all know. Fortunately, last weekend, we've come up to 40% of pre-pandemic again. You know, we flew 1.7 lakh passengers last Sunday. Uh, Midweek becomes less, weekend becomes much better. And when we were at 60% uh, of the traffic, the active COVID cases in the country were under 10,000. If I use the same logic, we are at 40,000 odd today. We should be at 10,000. I'm an optimist. I'm a born optimist. Hopefully in two to three weeks. August, I'm expecting 60% pre-pandemic traffic domestically. 70% in September, barring so many ifs. And I would love to see Christmas at 100% pre-pandemic domestic. Uh, and it's possible because vaccination has played a major role. Uh, Rupinderji rightly mentioned vaccination is one of the most important aspects for you know getting tourists and others to fly and I'm assuming that vaccination will only enhance. Coming to international traffic, uh, that's something that will really depend again Rupinderji explained it better than I would you know that depends so much on how people find India safe but uh, I still feel that international will pick up by Christmas this year substantially definitely from nearer uh, four to five hours of flying time, less long haul. Uh, and, and 2022, by summer of 2022, we should be close to some sanity of pre-pandemic uh, international as well. And these, these are my personal, very optimistic uh, figures, basis, you know, as how I see the industry progressing. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Kamal. Uh, interesting to hear it from a airline's point of view, because, you know, you really truly have the perishable product in your hands. So for you, it's, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it's been life a, and death. Yeah. A very tough time over the last few years. I, I we figure that out. All right. Let's move on to Kerry now. Uh, uh, Kerry, I now invite you to make uh, your remarks. How does Accord look at bringing back uh, confidence in uh, to its customers have how how is your experience been over this time and how do you see this whole thing playing out for for, for you and for accord uh, you're on mute kerry oh, there we go um there's two you know there's there's two approaches to this it's my own personal journey and experience having arrived in november 2019 um managed to survive 2020 and then no sooner did we start feeling quite confident um bam it came back again and with a vengeance 
Um, I think I think this particular um, uh, surge of of COVID uh, was was much more violent than what we saw in 2020. There was a lot of personal um, impact. Uh, you know, last year I, I I wasn't really aware of you know people who I knew that had become sick. Uh, but this time, you know, I did, and uh, we also lost uh, a staff member. Um, so it was very, very difficult uh, journey um, in this particular wave. Having said that, though, you know what we uh, what we witnessed last year, um, and I, I think it's the the resilience of this country is extraordinary. Um, and and what we did is that we put together a contingency plan. I mean, I think the first thing we all did was gather, you know, um, our thoughts together as a as a leadership group and sort of said, okay, here we go again. You know, we're back to we're back to square one. January, February, and March, we were having phenomenal success. Um, our occupancy, our RGI, uh, you know, it was it was fantastic. It was very positive. Um, and of course, we're opening hotels this year too. You know, we're opening a beautiful raffles, the first raffles in India in the middle of a pandemic um, in Udaipur. So, you know, we really needed to um, to consolidate. And why, where we were so successful last year is that we looked at it in increments. Uh, we didn't look beyond three months. Um, I think, you know, uh, to the point it, it, it has taught us so much. It's taught us leadership, agility, um, you know, technology has played a huge part to play, partnerships, um, you know, looking at that safety requirement. And, and I agree, you know, with that subtle message about safety. And last year when we saw all of these scary videos, and I can only describe them as scary, of people in PPE suits with spray guns and as you were walking into, a, into the hotel, uh, and we were mortified. I was like, oh my God, you're scaring me. <laughs> so what we did is that we needed to get that subtle message about safety and we needed to get that in, back into the consumer and make it front of mind. Uh, we put together uh, you know, a wonderful video uh, with music. Uh, Travel and Leisure gave us an award for it, thank you. Um, but what it did is it, it said that we're doing everything that we possibly can, all of the protocols, uh, you know, we we uh, joined partnership uh, with Bureau Veritas so that our safety protocols could get audited. Uh, we took e everything very, very seriously. And, and I think that, in, you know, started to instill the confidence um, back into the consumers. Um, and this is a, a massive shout out also too to the airlines because we introduced a welcome back program and SpiceJet, you were a big part of that, um, your, your commercial sales team as was Indigo and Vistara. And we needed to demonstrate that it was safe to get on a plane again and it was safe to come back into hotels. Uh, we did over 125 uh, trips and for meals. Uh, bringing our clients back in and then instilling that confidence. Uh, and we intend to do that again, to, to just demonstrate that, you know, when the time is right, it's okay to come back. Um, so we looked at, uh, you know, sorry, our first phase. So we called it phase zero uh, because we were literally back at ground zero again. Uh, the staff, absolute paramount. Absolute paramount. Accor um, introduced a HARTIS program last year on a global level um, where we were able to look after our ambassadors uh, that work for us in our hotels. We, we call them our HARTIS. And we looked after not just them, but, you know, you know, we were able to give financial assistance so the whole family could feel that, that impact. Because when you look after your staff, your staff will look after your customers. And we needed to make sure that they were safe, that their well-being. So that was number one priority. And then the second uh, step that we took was, you know, obviously vaccinations, right? So big vaccination program. It's not something that you want to publicise, to be to be honest. 
This is about caring for people and making sure that they're okay um, and we care enough of them to, to turn up for work. And again, that that uh, when when we do get to that level of where we have 100% vaccination right through our organisation, that will be part of our all safe label. Um, so that you know when you see that all safe sticker uh, that it covers so many different elements and having staff vaccinated is, is actually one of those. So combine that with technology, um, that, that then went into uh, phase one. Uh, we started to create, uh, talking to our clients, uh, we said, listen, if you, have to, if you have to venture out, because, you know, the wheels of industry have to keep turning, right? Um, we will give you space so that you can work, uh, you know, it, with confidence um, and security and safely. And, uh, you know, so our, I, I guess our message to, uh, you know, our, all of our customers was when travel is inevitable, let us take care of you because, uh, you know, we understand you have, to, you have to get out, you have to travel. So that's what we did, um, you know, in June uh, and, and it served us very, very well. And, uh, and now we're starting to open up, we're now into begin again. And uh, and here it's it's now more about looking at uh, you know another stage of of offers um, technology again. So our um, uh, uh, the VAR program, which is a, a wedding program by Novotel, it's for those who can't actually make uh, and turn up at a wedding. And so you can do exactly what we're doing now, streaming live. And Novotel will bring the wedding to to your home and to your and to your guest, which is an extraordinary technical achievement. So yeah, I mean all of these sort of things. But if anything that I have witnessed is the tenacity, the uh, willingness, um, and the resilience of this of this country to to bounce back. And I, I I'm like Kamal. I mean I'm. You know, praise be that phase uh, three doesn't hit, but I'm very, very confident that if we can keep going it the way we're going, we've got a nice steady climb. Um, and I, I, I'm like you, Kamal. I I think 100%. If you know by by December, if if we can keep going um, the way we're going and increasing those vaccinations. Thanks, Kerry. We've got to keep going. We have no choice, you know. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, interesting. The points that I could take away was, you know, subtle messaging. I think that's really the key because you don't want to focus on what had gone wrong or what you're trying to fix. And I think Rupinder too did bring up the uh, point about subtle mass messaging when they go out with their entire mm -hmm. storyline. Uh, mm -hmm. Also, I think you you uh, you know the focus on bringing back confidence. It's interesting to hear you say that too, because from a business point of view, you you'd like to bring that to your customers. From a government point of view, they'd like to bring it to the wider audience that would travel, uh, uh, whether as domestic or whether as international. So yeah, it's mm -hmm. an interesting point. I think uh, one point that I may uh, uh, slightly differ is that at some level there is going to be a vaccination number that is going to give confidence to people. Like, for example, today's ad of SpiceJet said, we are all 100% vaccinated. Um, mm -hmm. I agree with you. First, we have to protect our people. Our key assets, mm -hmm. the most important thing. But at some level, these numbers are going to, you know, they keep moving from vaccination to a fatality to, to, you know, all these kind of numbers. But we'll come back to that. Uh, let me now move on to Rohit. Rohit, uh, uh, you have uh, an amazing uh, business model. Uh, uh, sorry, Kerry, thank you so much for your time. I should You're have welcome. said that. But my apologies. <laughs> Rohit, uh, you have an amazing business model, an exciting company, and have some, uh, uh, you know, and have had some exciting times, I'm sure, during the pandemic uh, as, as, as OYO. Tell us about the uh, innovative ideas you came up with as a company during this pandemic and what can we learn from your experience? How do you plan to give the clients also the confidence to come back to, to OYO rooms, which is all over, everywhere, different shape and form, a beautiful product portfolio, you know, all over the country. So, uh, Rohit, over to you. Thanks. Thank you, Deepak. Thank you. Um, I must say that uh, 
we are in very very interesting times uh do we are damned and don't we are damned right um so uh, i think it's a it's a time where it requires enormous maturity and judgment on the part of every stakeholder to make this uh, reopening sustainable and really for the long term because what we don't want is clearly uh, any more waves of covid uh, so let me start with that by saying that and i think all of us have a big role to play in doing uh, the smallest bit we can there because frankly uh, people's desire to be out there is strong our desire for business to be back is very equally strong uh, i think the balance need to lie somewhere in between right um and and i always remind myself that uh, vaccine is plan b the world has no plan c right so we need to make make this one work um i i i will go back a little bit and just tell you simply more look i think we are slightly different in the in the sense that we work with thousands of partners uh, so our scale is uh, is very distributed and quite different from uh, maybe some of our esteemed uh, hospitality peers that we have but uh, and that makes it quite complex to really sense what exactly is the uh, initiative to be rolled out and i think one principle we followed very early on is that the world has no playbook for this right if the playbook exists it's probably somewhere in 1920s post spanish flu and it's very hard to recover that playbook and look at that so it doesn't exist right so use first principles be very close to the ground talk to partners customers almost on a daily basis right and a lot of our insights have come from when we have done that so personally me and my leadership team talk to partners every single week extensively directly without any agency in between right uh, for example tomorrow i'm out one week in the field visiting places from uh, as diverse from ghaziabad nearer to moradabad to almora to nanital right idea is to get a pulse check and from that came two or three very distinct insights on consumer behavior and what consumers were looking for so basis covered the sanitization program got rolled out all across sometime last may or april so that was hygiene and it became quite quickly hygiene for the entire industry so nothing to a sort of write home about but interestingly when we uh, when we were talking to consumers last year some of the consumers told uh, told us that look we we are we want assurance that the room is clean so please clean it in front of our eyes now that in hospitality is absolutely uh, weird right that no no customer will really like to see a room clean, clean in front of their eyes but think of this paradigm today when you go to a hotel and you see a staff member cleaning the lobby earlier you would have said they should have done it in the morning right today you actually feel good about it that this is being carried out so the psychology has changed and we launched a product called sby sanitize before your eyes and we rolled it out to across thousands of partners and interestingly what we started seeing in data was that every hotel which is tagged as being enabled to do sbye just got more customers right so people saw that tag on the app and came right now th this is truly and honestly speaking i remember this uh, meeting we were having and ritesh was also there and we were saying that this this is should we do it not do it because it's not usual but then said this is what we are hearing from partners and customers let's do it let's develop the product and take it out there right the the second thing which um, uh, which uh, we uh, is again a parallel is uh, i and and this is all of us not just me we truly believe that vaccination is the uh, is a surest path to uh, stability right and the speed of vaccination now in a network of our size how do we make sure that uh, that we incentivize that heavily right so look on the employee side we we move rapidly we have about 75% plus of our entire employee force already vaccinated first dose and i'm quite sure about 100% will get, get done within the month right but on the partner side is far more distributed so what we did was we said that every partner who's able to tell us right self certify that they and their staff members are fully vaccinated or at least one dose vaccinated not fully vaccinated we will give you a tag on the app 
saying you are a vaccinated property, right? And that will signal to the consumer that they are walking into a hotel where everybody they are interacting with is one dose vaccinated. On the other hand, we spoke to consumers and they said, will this make a difference to you? 87% consumers said it will change my decision. If I knew that I am walking into a place where people are fully vaccinated, right? So one was the right thing to do. The other thing was consumers are clearly telling us that they want to be in, in that zone. Today, just in three weeks, four weeks flat, 2,500 of our hotels are vaccinated. That, which means that every employee in that 2,500 hotels of ours today in India have got first dose vaccination and that number is improving by few hundred every week. Right? It, on the business side, we are seeing the revenue generated by those hotels per occupied room night rev par is 40 to 50 percent higher than hotels which don't carry the vaccinate tag. Right? So there's a clear commercial benefit also to the partner and we, we tell these human stories out and others also get encouraged to join in do the same thing, right? Now, um, I can go on. There are, there are many, many examples of product innovation. So a lot of stuff around cancellations, ease of cancellations, uh, vouchers, which were valid for six months. Those are more commercial uh, offerings, which I, I know we've done it. Many organizations have done it. Uh, but truly speaking, uh, I think SBY and Vaccinate stood out as large programs, which moved the needle substantially, right? My wish and desire, we haven't done it yet, is, uh, and I, I, I see this every time I go to monuments or, you know, visit, uh, uh, you know, tourist places. Every tourist goes out, does not contribute to the airline and the hotel only. It touches five lives, right? At least the tourist guy, the, you know, the dhaba wala outside the monument, right? It is, it is really an economy. It is an economy flywheel generator, every tourist, and not just restricted to the money which comes to the travel and tourism classical industry per se. Now, the question is that how do we each take on the responsibility of saying to get the flywheel moving a little bit? So, uh, one of the uh, you know things we are talking with is can we attach a lot of local tourist guides to our hotels, right? Where they get some training regularly and some knowledge. Because ours is, again, travel is a very local ecosystem in India. Uh, and last but not the least, I think uh, this is truly, uh, as we come out of this, is going to be first time Dekho Apna Desh, uh, the, the really the, I won't so call it the golden opportunity to do so, I'll call it the platinum opportunity to do so, right? Because never ever there is both a positive bias to travel within India and an inability to travel outside which is so strong so i think this is uh, uh, i think it's ours to lose as a country right but we will not because i i've seen the determination and zeal which all of us have including private sector government all our partners to make it happen uh, so i remain very optimistic and yet uh, i remain um, uh, i remain a little preachy to my teams and employees and partners about uh, about uh, you know covid appropriate behavior because that's just, uh, if they get bored listening to it, I'm okay, right? Uh, but I think uh, it's okay to still talk about it three times a day. So yeah, yeah. thank you, thank you, Deepak. Thank you so much, Rohit. That is wonderful, uh, uh, really uh, interesting um, ideas. So vaccination is plan B and there's no plan C. I, you know, this is absolutely, this is uh, uh, for sure and very well said. Uh, you, you know, one of the things that I think everybody in our business should know about is that you have to talk to your customers and partners extensively. People forget in uh, lockdown and shutdown that they should uh, they should not follow it. This is very good advice. Uh, sanitize before your eyes. I mean, this is, uh, yeah, who would have thought huh, that you would enter a hotel and you'd want to see it all being done. So interesting, interesting uh, approach. And what I found fascinating is that you said 40 to 50 percent rev par. Uh, increase on uh, with the vaccinate tag. My God, that's that just clearly shows that there is a direct proportion between RevPAR vaccination safety, uh, SBY, uh, SBY, etc. So that's really the 
the way forward for any any hospitality uh, business whether it is probably anything it could be airlines it could be hotels it could be restaurants it could be uh, even monuments and i could i, I saw rupinder smiling when you said dekho apna desh because in the pandemic much of her time went in uh, uh, in in dekho apna desh which has been i think one of the most successful programs from the ministry of tourism and widely viewed so yes uh, thanks so much and uh, thank you if, once if again may, deepak if i make a quick comment on what sure. he says very sure. quickly i completely agree with him on the vaccination because you know the day we announced that we are fully vaccinated and this is not today's ad this is about two and a half weeks back we were the first airline to do it in india we suddenly saw an uptick next day in our bookings so it has a huge huge positive impact in aviation as well yeah yeah absolutely absolutely, absolutely. and uh, that's that, that's so true and uh, uh, yeah i i got worried i thought i read two week uh, old newspaper today when you said that uh, kamal but you <laughs> obviously had advertised earlier too thank you so much uh, i now going to invite ranjit uh, to join us uh, we would be very interested to hear from you about how dubai is managing the recovery the confidence in customers and all that makes you know people flock to dubai during the pandemic uh, you know, i get friends sending me pictures and and videos of of going out having dinner watching football games i mean uh, you know it seems like hey nothing happened where you are you also have the expo coming up lots happening in the coming months please share with us what we can learn from dubai and and your experiences in managing hotels in in dubai in the middle east i think it's also important for us to hear you know there is of course kerry and there is rohit to talk, oh, and and uh, kamal who spoke about the indian perspective but to hear it from where you are would be very interesting and and you know there could be some learnings that we can all take away so ranjit over to you to be uh, delighted to be here uh, you know deepak i'm going to start with what happened in march 2020 and there's a you know a proverb that i read somewhere which said you know when the storm comes some people hunker down and some others build windmills and uh, along with our uh, ownership we decided to build windmills and uh, we were one of the few hotels during that time which decided to stay open so we haven't shut down at all during the pandemic we remained open uh, and what were we did or our strategies were sort of evolved constantly and they were multi pronged so our biggest priority as kerry also mentioned was you know protecting livelihoods obviously uh, we have a huge workforce over here so what we did was we first of all in march when the whole pandemic hit we gave them all vacation time so they all stayed uh, at home uh, whoever could work from home was allowed to work from home uh, during this time we also utilized it very effectively to do almost 500 hours of online training uh on the new protocols that were evolving constantly and because we didn't shut we had to be agile we had to constantly listen to what the dubai health authorities were sending out the new uh, sops so that way we were you know doing that online training with them also because a lot of these uh, all of our associates were in their own accommodation they were stuck they were away from home we created whatsapp groups so that i could stay connected with them constantly we did a lot of uh, we a lot of stress was put on mental health sessions we did yoga online we had our heads of department talk to them about their growth so that we kept them constantly engaged and because we wanted to keep them safe and not go out uh, we even because a lot of our associates in dubai we provide accommodation for them so a large chunk of our workforce works in the accommodation provided by the hotels we even sort of sent care pampers to their homes uh, to their accommodation so that they did not have to go out and get groceries and things like that during this time quite a few of our uh, associates were also stuck in their home countries because they had gone on vacation and things were opened before that and they weren't able to come back and as this uh, lockdown came and it became longer and longer we even decided to give them sort of sustenance allowances so that they could survive in their home country that was one part of it where we were protecting livelihoods the other thing was obviously you know as a business we needed to make sure that it was sustainable we could hold on when occupancies had dropped to almost 4 5% uh, you know so we did the usual we took pay cuts according to grades we you know did a lot of energy saving uh, uh, initiatives we shut down floors renegotiated vendors sort of handled the cost side like that 
obviously when the shutdown came we also had a lot of guests who were still here with us who were stuck who couldn't go away and so we were constantly in touch with them we stayed we stayed engaged with them and some of them who were stayed with us in march of last year are still staying with us so they've decided to stay almost for a year two years and they've even booked for for another year ahead saying that this became home away from home for us you kept us safe you kept us secure why should we go anywhere else so that was one part of how we got some uh, great business so the guests who were staying with us you know because there was lockdown you couldn't go outside we created things like walking tracks for them we customized all their food for them uh, you know ghar ka khana was made for you know most of our indian uh, guests who were staying with us and there were many protocols that were put in place and which was very well defined also by the dubai health authorities with regards to sanitization of bag baggage temperature checks you know contact free check in etc etc so all those things were done and we even created you know whatsapp for business where our guests were constantly in touch with us with up for updates for any request they had so that there was it was all contact free also you know there's always opportunity in a crisis we looked at new revenue models we looked at ways of making additional income at a very difficult time so obviously our delivery business took off in a big time also a uh, hospitality home with you know looking after laundry services care packages uh, hampers that you know guests were sending from all over the world to their relatives here so all those things were also done what was really interesting during that time was the government over here was very very proactive they gave very detailed safety protocols they were very well defined and we were constantly in touch and what was the best part was they used to check on it also to make sure it was being followed so used to have random checks by the dubai municipality they used to walk in to ensure there was distancing masks sanitizers etc so we close worked very closely with dubai municipality with dubai health authorities and stuff like that then obviously while we were surviving through those days then we were looking for the green shoots and you know you then you come to the revival or the slight revival part and june and july we were cautiously optimistic we saw a bit of occupancy is going up uh, and uh, the new normal became a way of life for us uh, and business started coming in so as i said you know the long staying guests who were stuck here decided not to go back they brought their families in when a few borders opened they decided to stay back here the biggest thing that happened in dubai was the ipl happened uh, so the ipl shifted out of india came here in august and uh, we created for the first time a bio bubble was created because we had a uh, cricket team that stayed with us and during that bio bubble there were new new things we learned there were new protocols that were put into place and you know and when, and when i think back all our associates that we took care of during the survival stage went into that bio bubble willingly for almost 3 months themselves that they, they couldn't go out they were stuck with the team and they went out of the way because we took care of them during the survival stages then what happened the domestic market staycations you know we made the staycation deals uh, a lot more lucrative and domestic market started just booming uh, so that saw us through uh, you know q3 q4 for us and then finally after the abrahamic accord was signed israel as a market opened up and israel when it opened up it was like wow where this was a non existent market that suddenly came out of the blue <laughs> master stroke and uh, and that came out of the blue with our relation that we had with israel out of india we close work very closely with them there this hotel and our both our hotels here did extremely well so so that sort of uh, benefited and then we also adapted we suddenly had to figure out kosher food we had to figure out all their various nuances and it was a fantastic learning for us and then we created our covid marshal program within the within the hotels where they were sort of designated to ensure that the guests the staff were sort of following all the various safety protocols and then we went uh, you know in order to be we created new policies to have flexible cancellation policies where either you canceled it or we gave them credit to be used for the next 6 months so that was also you know being very customer centric and making sure that they were looked after a right. big yeah. learning point for us was the food and beverage you know food and beverage uh, in dubai during uh, in the revival stage did extremely well i mean all the restaurants had very stringent protocols you know you have to do sometimes 3 meter distancing 2 meter distancing you have to put dividers in between there were at one point there were no buffets allowed but then they later said okay now 
you know, you can do buffet, but they have to be served. Uh, stringent cleaning protocols uh, had to be followed. Mask had to be followed. So a lot of those things were done. A lot of emphasis was on also on healthy food, immunity boosters, and things like that. So when we started looking at our whole uh, offerings on FNB, uh, by the time we closed last year of 2020, the, the revenue between rooms and uh, FNB was almost 50-50%. And and you know, and which was very interesting. And you know, usually rooms to F and B is either 60, 40, 70, 30. So Ranjit, is it uh, am, would I be right in saying that you really didn't feel the impact of the pandemic as financially, or did you not feel it as much as a hot, a similar hotel would feel in India? Is that true? That would be true to say. Okay. Uh, as an operator, for sure, yes, for the owners with their loans and the banks, uh, stuff like that, they also did get uh, quite a few waivers and deferments. But yes, but as an, as an operator, we still managed. We were, when we closed the financial year, we were still a bit positive. Lovely. Fantastic. You're you're very, very difficult, uh, difficult you're year. Lucky ones. You're amongst the lucky ones being in Dubai. So, yeah, that's very interesting. And, and uh, you know, to, to hear that, uh, obviously, there there is a support. Uh, the ecosystem is is far more uh, i guess they are more disciplined when it comes to taking orders from from the government uh, but yeah interesting so thanks thanks so much uh, uh, for your for ranjit for you I'll, I'll circle back to you rakshit uh, okay we are now at 5:30 i'm sorry we've already crossed our one hour but the conversation is so interesting that uh, you know i don't have the heart of heart to say uh, uh, you know that we need to end quickly but rakshit you and i come from the world of uh, you know uh, corporate travel, leisure travel. We are the guys who are uh, you know, still standing. I'm surprised they're still standing, but we are. Huh? Uh, what are you hearing from the corporate customers? What will you know make them come back on the road? Uh, will it be uh, a hybrid model going forward, work from home and office? Will it be you know uh, different for different industries? And it's very important to hear your point of view because it also impacts airlines and hotels directly. Yes, um, yes, Deepak. Uh, we, we both come from similar worlds. You're a ve you're a veteran. I'm a veteran. I'm a novice. That's the only difference. Uh, but uh, 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 look, I think um, uh, you know the, the Indian economy is way too heterogeneous to to um, to generalize. But I'll try and generalize anyway. So if I if I divide the corporate into three buckets, uh, three discrete buckets, which is I'd say large global multinationals operating in India. Uh, uh, would be one bucket. Large Indian companies, you know, the flag bearers of Indian industry would be the second bucket. And I think the the life and blood of the Indian economy would be the SMEs, would be the third bucket. Um, and we see very, very different behavior and 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 um, intent in, in these three buckets. So the large global multinationals operating in India, for example, have been extremely uh, cautious. Many of them still, most of them, I would argue, still have travel bans in place uh, and uh, travels per Permitted uh, only with CXO approval for, you know, in the most exceptional um, of circumstances. Uh, and I think they're looking for, it's more of a globally coordinated approach and they're looking for, for you know, some form of global consistency um, in, in relaxation uh, of, these, of these constraints before they let their workforce uh, be mobile. Uh, the large Indian um, companies, they, we, what we are seeing is that they're they're balancing some some of their trepidation with uh, pragmatism, right? So, uh, and in you know, uh, a lot of them are family-owned conglomerates, and so there's a there's a certain benevolent, um, you know, uh, uh, leadership model there. And so, what they're saying is, look, we need to get back to work, but we will work with what we need you to help us enhance the duty of care. Uh, around uh, around our people, so that we can provide them with a greater degree of assurance uh, when they go out and take personal risks uh, for us. And so we worked with our partners, some of whom are are on this panel, uh, in order to provide that that uh, that assurance wrapper and to to provide the confidence that need that's needed. And so, and some of that some of that has to do with the basic hygiene factors associated with travel. Some of it has to do with information provision and transparency and tracking and so on, so on and so forth. But we are starting to see conversations evolve around that. 
The third bucket actually is the most interesting because uh, I think that bucket said, look, they can't hang on much further. They need to get back to work. They need to engage with their customers. They need to engage with their organizations. They need to sort their supply chain issues out. And they, they don't have neither the resources nor the infrastructure to do it remotely. And so they're back in the air and they're back in hotels and, and so on and so forth. So I totally, you know, what, what um, Kamal said about uh, what he's experienced over the last few weeks totally resonates with us. And what we're finding is that, uh, I, you know, I, I think it would be fair to say that the lockdown last year and the lockdown this year ended around the same time, which is around the 1st of June, right? And what we're seeing in June is Forex, the, the recovery that we saw last year. So for, for us to get to this sort of trading level took us till October last year, and we we're already there by the end of June. And, you know, um, I'm, I'm sure, I, or at least, you know, I'm optimistic that the July trajectory uh, will, will follow as well. So uh, I think that's that's what what's happening there and what we are seeing in terms of work from home and work from office. We're seeing a shift in tone and, and sentiment there. I think six months ago when we were having this conversation, most companies were committed to the idea of extended working from home. And there's been a rather significant shift ever since the vaccination program accelerated. And it's no secret that since you know, that, that the private sector has kind of, um, you know, um, led from the front when it comes for, when it comes to looking after uh, vaccination programs for their employees and making vaccines available to them. And uh, I think once where, where we are seeing is uh, where we are seeing significant vaccine traction, uh, we're seeing, we're, we're, we, you know, we're seeing those organizations that are actually asking their, their, their workers to return to the office uh um, as as fast as possible so i think uh, across the client spectrum most clients are saying if you are fully vaccinated then you're you're expected to be back in office if you're partially partially vaccinated we're going to give you some flexibility and if you're not vaccinated then we're going to wait and see you know um how we how we get you to that get that get you to that stage so yeah yeah i guess uh, I guess it's there, there's three words for us: uh, vaccination, vaccination, and vaccination. I think that's that's really what comes across from everybody. Rakshit, thank you so much. I'm now. Uh, I know uh, Rupinder has to uh, leave for another meeting outside her office, so I'm going to go real quick. I have uh, two or three uh, uh, qu two questions which I want to ask each of you, and then I'm going to hand it over to Rupinder. Uh, uh, this is a billion dollar question, or maybe I don't know how many billion dollars. The best year for all of us was 2019. We all agree to that. When will the business return to 2019? And uh, your quick assumption, Rakshit, why don't you go first? And then we'll go to um, Ranjit. The middle of 23. Okay. Ranjit? See, without, without my crystal ball that I usually gaze into, I, I would say the same, you know, uh, I think I would stick to about uh, Q, Q4 of next year and early uh, okay. Q1 of 23. Okay. Um, Kerry? Sorry, had myself on mute again, those pesky uh, renovations going on upstairs. I, I have to agree. I, for me, don't have the crystal ball, but I'm going to say early 2023. Um, could even see that in Q4 of 2022. Could, could. So late 22, early 23. Kamal? So for domestic travel, I am bullish. Uh, this winter could be end of the year or early next year, pre-pandemic level. For international travel, I would say uh, September, October 22. Okay, you're you're optimistic, uh, Rohit. I think we will see a strong recovery, maybe mid of next year, um, and full recovery by end of next year. Okay, so 2022, late early 2023 sounds like you guys are back on the road. Yeah, fantastic. So uh, I'm going to give you all exactly 30 seconds each for your final words of advice to the government. Uh, or to the industry, and then uh, Rupinder will come to you. So, Rohit, why don't we start with you? I think for me, it's not about advice to the government. It's more um, about ongoing dialogue. I think, uh, honestly, uh, this is a great opportunity, I will reiterate, to build the Kokhnadesh, right? And and really be more, much more thoughtful uh, as opportunity. Let me give an example, right? 
why should agra be a day visit destination it benefits no one yeah right? now what is needed in agra to to help the tourists stay one or two days right i think if you just problem solve on such things uh, i think it gives a multiplier effect to the entire city right and economy and there are so many such opportunities uh, that uh, we can align on and as a private sector and working with the government uh deliver quite seamlessly so uh it is uh it is ours collectively to lose uh as thank i call it but uh lots of opportunity to work together thank you rohit uh rakshit um you know the the only thing i would say is look we can take hardship in our stride right we've been doing it uh right through the first gulf war the second gulf war various busts and booms um since and and srs and now this Uh, I think for us, what we need is planning certainty. So what we want is a, a certain predictability and consistency in the drafting and application of rules uh, that govern travel. I think that's the that's the biggest ask from us. Great, yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, Ranjit, for me, I think you know, drive drive vaccination would be the first thing that I would say, and then digital is the way to go today, and everything has to be around that. fantastic um kamal so immediate requirement uh, and especially to mot would be permit vaccinated people to travel freely with no rt pcr nothing across the country on an asap basis let's do it as an app we've done a travel pass with iata at an international level which will go you know which is already being a uh, pilot run hopefully in two months you know we'll have that india must participate in that we are piloting that project but even before that uh, you know within the country for domestic travel across 29 states you're doubly vaccinated just that's your green pass and rt pcr must also be accepted because we are a long way off thank you yeah absolutely ease of ease of travel is the key to it uh kerry yeah look I, i i couldn't agree more and i think most of the comments have have already been said um and it's not so much advice but i think it's a collaborative approach um you know sort of working working with the with this coalition i guess if you like uh the coalition of the hospital and uh, hospitality and travel industry and you know what we would like to see is technology being used um definitely the vaccination drive but consistency in message so that it's not confusing for the consumer for 29 states whether they don't know whether they have they can quarantine they don't quarantine you need this you need that so it needs to have a, a national um consistent message um for the for the consumers i think that's probably the key mm. yeah absolutely thank you uh, kerry it's uh, there and now i'm going to i'm going to uh, add my two pennies worth for the international market Uh, for me it would be uh, uh, it would be incredible india 3.0 that is what needs to be launched we need to be right ahead in the international market the government has the budget they must spend it on on a fantastic campaign to bring back the international market to india which is going to happen very soon uh, there is it should be all based on social media that's how people are going to uh, are going to get attracted to travel here the government should give us 3 months lead time before they open the destination so there is enough time for us to go promote get everybody give the confidence before people start arriving and if you are double vaccinated that's it you don't need no rt pcr you have no test your visa gets issued you just travel in and travel out as if there was no covid and i think life would be would be much easier with all of that so with that i am uh, going to request uh, rupender to please uh, uh, give her final words for today before we wrap up thank you rupinder thanks everyone i think uh, a lot of points that I have come across from all of you as practitioners of the trade are in sync with what we are thinking and so that's very reassuring because that's pretty much the way we've been thinking on how to go forward from here and therefore plan a plan b plan c is vaccine 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 and so that is clearly the way forward and uh, we are happy to therefore uh, be continuously engaged with health to make sure 
that that remains on track and India does seem to be moving as per a plan. So I think in the next few months, we are looking at a sizable population being double vaccinated. So, so that, that is in fact, very, very reassuring for us also. In terms of digital, yes, absolutely. I think that is where the opportunity lies out of the COVID in how to uh, improve productivities and be at a more cutting edge uh, in terms of service providers as we compete. And I always say that while pandemic, and that is one part of the story, but eventually we are competing with the world in this trade. And therefore, we will have to be really up there and countries are going to be very aggressive post-pandemic also, but even otherwise, if we really want to uh, make use of all the heritage and all the natural assets that we talk about, we will really, really have to be uh, very modern in our approach in terms of the way we run our businesses. So, and on the other part, the learning that has come out of COVID and uh, thanks for taking it up with passion, Rohit. The Deko Apna Desh, in fact, that has been such a learning process for all of us. Uh, a vertical that was kind of sort of just being taken more in an organic fashion. It was growing, but no one was really looking at it in that tactical a manner that here lay a whole opportunity. And there, there's a challenge and an opportunity there because how to make sure that all those Indians that are now traveling within India will not just simply just take a flight and go away. It's wonderful to travel ar around the world. However, not everybody travels more than maximum one or two times annually out of India. So for the rest of the times, the long weekends, the times when you are working from home, I think that's where it's a huge opportunity for us to tap into a very aspirational India today, wanting to travel, wanting to check out places, going trekking, going cycling, going cruising, doing all kinds of fun activities. And uh, Therein also, and uh, Agra, since you mentioned Agra, we did Antaj Agra as part of the Kopnadesh sessions, and there was so much to be learned there. So we did everything in one hour session except the Taj, which is always the more obvious thing to do. And I was there in uh, Agra a couple of weeks back, and Taj was locked that day, actually. I mean, we could not see the Taj, but believe me, we stayed two nights. I could have stayed another night too because we went into the Zardozi workshop and you know had a fantastic exposure to the museum. So so much to be explored, and indeed that's where the opportunity should be leveraged by India, not only with we us, because when we are looking at these new products, lesser known products, it's not that we are just creating it for the domestic market, but also for all our inbound travelers who are looking for more experiential learning, who are looking at India in its very, very uh, colorful forms, the cuisines, the arts, the crafts, the heritage. Deepak and I, we are working on uh, some stuff on heritage too, and we hope that we can take uh, a lot of things forward on that. So yes, planning definitely required for the current, for the short term in terms of when to open and giving all of you a reasonable amount of time to, to create the right pitch to reach out to your uh, trade and travel partners across the world. And the efforts are on. In fact, as we are speaking, I was just editing a letter that we are writing out to Home and Health uh, to, to set up an appointment with them. And that's an exercise, of course, we are doing almost every other week formally. And informally, it's happening every single day. So, so let's hope uh, for the best and let's hope that domestic tourism for now carries on with the same zest as can be seen in Manali and um, some parts of Uttarakhand. But I'm only playing, crossing my fingers, toes, body cross that it does not uh, lead to a third phase because definitely caution care is needed. So things looking interesting, things looking good, but I think we we'll really have to keep our antennae up there if we really want to leverage and exploit the opportunities that exist for tourism in India. And we are seemingly doing the right things, but I think it's important to remain consistent. It's important to remain disciplined about it and being very tactical and strategic uh, in how we pitch and what we pitch and where we pitch. So, so those are some of my learnings from all of you. And uh, thank you very much, Fiki. Thanks, Deepak. And thanks to all the co-panelists for very engaging ideas. I've noted them down. We should probably uh, meet again and work on all these. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rupinder. It's uh, been a fantastic uh, one and a half hours. And uh, uh, I think this is amongst uh, the very interesting discussions that we've had uh, in the last few weeks. I think uh, 
uh, as everybody has spoken about vaccination there's been some interesting uh, uh, in, uh, you know uh, ideas from ranjit uh, from what they did away from uh, here the airline piece the corporate travel piece oyo from accord i think uh, you know each one uh, thank you so much for, to each of you for your time and and uh, for for sharing your experiences with us this has been a lovely uh, one and a half hours thank you very much and thank you on behalf of fiki for for taking the time out rupinder especially to you thank you so much thank you everybody very nice very thank very engaging. yes thank, thank you. you bye thank you everybody bye 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 bye, -bye. bye.